I watched so very, very, very little pro wrestling in 2023. Very little. It was mostly just the pay-per-views. That's about it. Couple of segments, couple of pieces of shows here and there. That's all. (laughs) So, I guess I wanted to see, hey, it's a new year. It's 2024. Let's start off trying to give Raw a shot again for whatever particular reason. Well, the way they were hyping up this day one show made me feel like uh, I need to watch because I feel like something big could happen. And it's the first show of the year. It's been a long time since I've watched a full episode of Raw. So what the hell, let's give it a shot. Plus, some of the crap that I don't care about, I'll just be flipping back and forth you know, to the college football playoff anyways, right? Um, And that's what I did. Uh, I'm glad I did tune in to watch this. I could say, like, without some of the shit they kind of did to load up this show, you know, I can only envision how boring the Raws still are. I don't know how folks do it three hours every single fucking week. I just couldn't imagine. Uh, But you start off with Nia Jax versus Becky Lynch, which is typically not something that would get me to want to continue to watch the rest of your show, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, and I was pleasantly surprised when Nia Jax won. This could be some redirection, and you're going to put Becky in a big spot from WrestleMania, so be it fine, but they put Nia over here. Clean, no bullshit. Even to the point where Becky's face was kind of busted up again. A, the, the only thing that, that, that I questioned about the whole premise here, going back five years ago, is shit. Nia Jax busting up Becky Lynch's nose is the best fucking thing that ever happened to her. She shouldn't be mad. She should be thanking a bitch. I'm just saying. Um, so it was a decent start to the show, and the crowd in San Diego certainly enjoyed it. Uh, Cody Rose comes out in the next segment, and he had a promo. So what do you want to talk about? Fuck out of here. (laughs) Like, honestly, I don't even remember what he said. I think there was a Shinsuke clip, and he said something. I don't really remember what happened. I certainly don't think there's anything of any significant consequence. You know, can we stop pretending like Cody is that dude? Are we at that place yet? Can people have that honest conversation? God, and if he is, like, think about how how that means, like, really not good things for the WWE and their main event seats. Yeesh. I guess. I legit don't remember. I think I might have flipped back and forth to the college football playoff once or twice, so to be fair, like, that's probably it. I just wasn't paying much attention. But this shit didn't give me much reason to pay attention. And maybe that's the point I'm getting at. Then there was a tag team match with Kofi Kingston and main event Jey Uso. And, you know, here's my whole thing. You know, I'll just finish the story bullshit more on that in a moment. But the crowd mostly just pops for Cody's freaking song and the overdone pyro, whatever the hell else. Um... But Jay's getting similar reactions when he comes out. He's got the crowd even more involved. And frankly, if you're talking about finishing a story, he would make more logical sense, although you've done that a couple of times. The same. But this tag match was over pretty quickly because whatever the fuck dude it was from Imperium, it looks like he got his bell rocked by a Kofi Kingston kick. I guess that's what Kofi bet when he said he was going to finish the story. He's coming after all whiteies, and his great white whale is Brock Lesnar, bitches. He's coming for you, Brock! <laughs> uh, that said, it was a really awkward finish. You could tell, like, ah, oh, fuck, what happened here? At least they stopped the match. The dude had his bell rung, like, This match ain't that important in the grand scheme of things. You got to protect the talent. That's refreshing and nice to see. Uh, Then there was this video package with Ivy Nile. And I'm like, who the fuck is this? And why should I care? And apparently she was, she just come up from NXT, I guess. And she's going to wrestle Rhea Ripley. That still doesn't answer the question of why I should care. And after watching this match, I don't really know why I should care. So this is yet another example. And sometimes it's going to be the challenge, right? 
when you have certain people as champions, when you don't believe that their championships are at threat, you just tend to not really care. And at no point in time did I think Rhea Ripley was at stake of losing her belt here. So um, I didn't care. What I did care about, though, was our truth God bless that man. He is the Judgment Day. He's in the Judgment Day. I give a shit what anybody says. And he should be. A lame-ass mid-card faction like the Judgment Day should be proud and happy to have somebody, a loyal foot soldier like our truth involved in it. Um, but you got flashbacks of the awesome truth. And then you've got him talking about our truth. <laughs> He's getting all confused to be like, to dominate. <laughs> it's fantastic. All I'm going to say is this, dude. Like, as far as Dominic Mysterio goes, his ability to get heat like that. There are people in the business doing it for 20, 30 years, went through an entire career, and people even had successful careers, could never get that type of heat. His ability to generate heat in his own fucking hometown, nonetheless. Holy shit, man. Golly. But damn. Between him and then our truth being our truth, they've got something here with this our truth judgment day shit. I'm down for it. But what I'm really down for is our truth deserves a match at WrestleMania this year. Like a match that he's not part of an Andre Giant Memorial Battle Royal, none of that bullshit. Like a legit match. He deserves a legit match at WrestleMania. He does. He's been too good to the company for too many years. He's still there. He still provides some value. When you talk about people that earn a spot, WrestleMania authority, our truth has earned a fucking spot. It's truth mania this year. It's not Kofi mania a few years ago. It's truth mania this year, damn it. We need to see him get a freaking match on the WrestleMania 40 card. And then we got to what is going to ultimately be the segment that everybody talks about. <laughs> the, we have a former WWE champion returning, and I'm like, oh, who, who could it be? Who could it possibly be? And it's fucking Jinder Mahal. <laughs> I said, oh my God, you can just see the crowd was deflated. <laughs> They're thinking it's Brock. They're thinking it's Austin. They're thinking it's somebody else. And it's fucking Jinder Mahal. Like, that shit right there just felt like Vince McMahon. And then he doesn't get any better when Jinder starts shitting on the USA. Hey, I'm with you there. I right? Anything that he said was wrong, technically, but it's fucking 2024 now. And we're doing anti-American promos. Oh, but man. Then the electrifying one's music hit. The people's champion. It's the Rockies on fucking Raw. And I knew there was a reason I was supposed to watch Day One tonight. And this was fucking it. And holy shit. The, the little tribute, the little nod to Shiki Baby. He said, who's this bitch ass jabroni? <laughs> the uh, <laughs> douchebag chant. You know, yeah, it's kind of corny, but it's a fucking rock and it works and it gets the crowd really fucking involved. You wish most of you, your favorite wrestlers now, could do that type of shit. But in general, though, there are going to be people that say that this promo segment was actually kind of eh. It, I, I would generally agree with that, but man, the finish worked. And what was telling here was Ginger was able to get in some good, clean shots on the rock before he got taken to town with the... Rock bottom and the pair of the spine buster and the people's elbow. Like they let Jinder get in something. And Jinder played his role perfectly here. He really did. He was an unsung hero of this segment. And not being totally ass serious. He made this shit work as much as The Rock did. He really did. But man, when The Rock gets that mic again and he starts talking about, you know, plate going somewhere to get something to eat. I'm like, where the fuck's he going with this? Is he going to talk about In-N-Out Burger, some cheap-ass San Diego pop? I, I don't fucking get it. And he's talking about, should I sit in a booth? Should I sit at the bar? And I'm saying, oh. As soon as he got to that second one, I said, oh, I think I know where he's going with this, you motherfucker. You magnificent motherfucker. 
And he says, or should I sit at the head of the table? And the fucking place just exploded and you can fucking feel the energy. You can feel the desire from the fans. They felt that shit. They want that shit. They finally are going there. Been waiting for this shit for years. Woo! Oh, man. And to all the people right now that are trying to say, well, you could do it at the Elimination Chamber in Perth, Australia. Fuck Australia. You can have a rock appearance. You don't need to have a rock versus Roman match there. No. This is the type of match. This is this generation's like Hogan Rock type of shit. Like, that's what it feels like for this generation, right? Some kind of full circle shit. All that Cody Rhodes got to finish the story. Fuck his force fake ass story. You got a real fucking story here. And then if you want to talk about WrestleMania, you could tie back to all those years ago, the Royal Rumble in Philadelphia, when Roman won and got booed. He was getting helped by The Rock, and Rock's sitting there holding up his arm and be like, oh, this fucking is dog shit. Terrible. Like, there's so many layers of the fucking story. How can you possibly tell me that Cody's story is better? Fuck off. Fuck you. He can wait. Or he can sit there and never finish his story because his story's stupid anyways. Give him somebody else to work with. No, this match has to be a WrestleMania main event. Not an Elimination Chamber main event. Not a Royal Rumble main event. Fuck all that crap. Oh, The Rock was blown up doing a promo. Yeah, and who gives a shit? Who gives a crap? The people still ate it up. They still loved it. Oh, man. Like, they're finally going there. I'll, it will be very curious to see how this is all going to play out. You assume there's going to be some type of, they were teasing some type of big announcement by Triple H Thursday on the, on the Peacock. So I'm assuming this might be like, hey, Rock's going to be in Perth. We'll see if it's actually to face Roman or if it's going to be like, I'm just going to make an appearance there. But again... This match needs to happen at fucking Mania, period. And then we got to the main event. It was Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. And I guess the match was fine. It's about what you would expect between these two. But I can't be the only one that was surprised that they didn't pull the trigger on having Damian Priest cash in here. I'm not the only one, right? Like, it felt like with all the shit they were doing here... This might have been the time and the moment if you were going to do it to do it. Are you just going to have Damien hold it for a year and just never cash it in, never cash it in successfully? Like, what the hell are we going to do with him here? And I know that you get something you say, well, you got a year to cash it in. You don't, you don't have to rush it. Eh, no, you don't have to rush it, but you start to wonder where the opportunity to fit it in comes in at. Just saying. Um... And even you you had them out there. You had Damian Priest out there. Why the hell didn't you just have him cash in? Whatever, I guess. <laughs> that was kind of a surprising finish to the show, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, there were a few things I enjoyed on this show. And obviously the big one was the Brahma Bull, the great one. And that tease, like that. Or should I sit at the head of the table? Like, all the other shit didn't matter when people heard that. Like, that saved everything. That was the highlight. And, you know, yeah, I could have sat there and not watched this show and caught the clip of it online an hour or two later. But to feel the legit surprise excitement of, you know, when Ginger comes out, I'm like, eventually, oh, they're setting this up for something's going to happen, right? This is either Rock or Austin. They're going to fuck him up. Like... To actually have The Rock come and like experience that pop and be able to watch him ply his craft and give that tease. I'm so glad I watched the show live. I'm not going to watch Raw next week. Hell, no way in hell. Because I know this is just a dick tease. And you're going to go back to boring ass three hours. But glad I watched this one. 